Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for June the 12th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 1 Chronicles chapters 8, 9, and John chapter 16. The title of my devotional is Kept from Stumbling, and we're looking at John 16, verse 1, which says, These things I have spoken to you so that you may be kept from stumbling. Well, it will not be an easy road ahead for disciples. Um, disciples, the ones who Jesus is talking to, the 12 apostles, or 11, I should I should say at this point, um, or for future generations of believers. But Jesus speaks of things to come so that they and us will not stumble. Christians need to understand that suffering, persecution, and trials are coming so that they are not surprised and tempted to turn away from him. It's It often is the case when a person becomes a Christian, they think that life is going to be so much easier. And they wonder, why am I going through these difficult things? Is it because I'm not walking after God? Is it because I've made a mistake in following Jesus? Is it because something wrong is wrong in my life? Well, it could be that something is wrong in in your life and God is trying to get your attention. But it could also be that... God allows trials for his purposes, even to refine us, to bring us into places we wouldn't normally go to, and contact with other people. But we definitely know that God works in all things for our good and his glory. Romans 8.28 promises us that. So um, Jesus gives several reasons for the difficult times ahead in the context of this verse. Um, First of all, the world hates them because they are not of this world, but belong to the Father. Um, Jesus wants the people to know that we're not of the world, and for that reason, the world hates us. John chapter 15, verses 18 to 20 reminds us of this. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. And so you wonder, why doesn't the world love me? Why Why don't people... Um, appreciate who I am even as a Christian and living for him. Well, you're not of the world, so the world doesn't love you. And it says, because, in verse 19 of chapter 15, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. And so, and also, um, chapter 16, which just then the following verse, verse 2, says, they will make you outcasts from the synagogue. Now, this meant cultural ostracism. So what will it look like in terms of the world hating you? Well, it will be even they cast you out of their community. They no longer recognize you as somebody of, of worth um, and uh, of be, worthy to be listened to as well. Um, but this is painful and hurts to be cut off now for Jews to be cut off from fellow worshipers um, and also then from society in general, from your friends and so on. Jesus reminded the disciples in um, Luke chapter 12 verses 49 through 53 that he didn't come to bring peace to the world, but he came to bring division um, and even cutting across family lines. And it really is Painful. So he reminds them here um, that you know, so that you wouldn't be kept st- from stumbling. That um, so that you would be kept from stumbling. He reminds them that they'll go through difficult times um, and even from the world. Now there will be people in the world that will even seek to kill Christians, thinking that they are pleasing God. Now John sixteen two goes on to say, an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he is offering service to God. Pre Christian Paul, who was a Jew, definitely felt this way about his persecution of Christians. Uh, remember when they were stoning Stephen, Acts chapter seven fifty eight reminds us that the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul, and then after this he goes on to persecute the Christians uh, violently. Well. Um, And it is this way. The world thinks that this is pleasing to God, that um, they're deceived into thinking that Christians are speaking against God. But actually, because why? Because they don't want to change. Because they see the world differently. Jesus brings transformation to the way that we view everything. It is a spiritual transformation and change, uh, and the world cannot understand it. It can only be understand by, understood by the Spirit. So in their persecution of Christians, 
the world reveals that they do not know the Father or Jesus. And we see this in John 16, 3. These things they will do because they have not known the Father or me. We could look back at John 15, 21, which says, But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know the one who sent me. So they will... They will be trying to destroy Jesus and his people. Now, at the end of the chapter, Jesus reminds the disciples that while they will have tribulation in the world, their Lord and Savior has overcome it. John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Now, one of the awesome things is, Um, He's with us. And so the overcomer is with us to help us. We also need to remember that even as Jesus died but overcame the world in his submission to the Father, we too might die um, in terms of at the hands of the world and suffer. But God will deliver us and exalt us also in his timing as well. And he promises that we will have peace. Not only did the one we are following make it through and is now glorified, but he promises us the help of the Holy Spirit. John 16, 7 says, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. For if I go, I will send him to you. So, and then also we are guaranteed that the Father will hear and answer our requests so that our joy may be full in John 16, 24. So we have all the resources we need to make it through. Jesus does not want us to turn back. He does not want us to stumble. But we, he promises we're going to go through difficult times. And one of the reasons and the main reason that is is because he's taken us out of the world in the sense of made us not of the world. Um, he's made us a new creation in Christ. And the world hates that because it doesn't want to change. But the, by the transforming work of Jesus in our lives, we're able to give the gospel to others and God then goes through that again with other people, bringing them out of the world through the work of the Spirit in their lives. So how do you feel about being treated the same way as Jesus was by the world? Um, It actually is quite humbling on one hand that we're honored to do so, isn't it? And we're also encouraged that God is at work in us in ways we cannot see. Even as through the death of suffering and death of Christ, God brought redemption to the world. So he is at work in our suffering. Does Jesus' promises of peace and joy cause you not to stumble? We need to hold on to that. And it's a peace that the world can't take away, can't understand, um, but it holds us, doesn't it? And what is life without peace and joy? Jesus wants us to have that. So if you don't have that, I would encourage you to ask for it and and keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for, for Jesus and his promises and his teaching here. He doesn't want us to stumble. So Lord, let us follow Jesus. Let us take to heart what he says um, and let us appreciate that he's with us always. He gives us his peace and his joy and all that we need for life in this age. In your name we pray. Amen.